Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I will show you how to make a flipbook animation in UI that uses a material. And I will also show how to replace the, the Lara loading screen uh, image and how to hide the text and so that your material will look like this and you'll be able to set the color. Essentially, this, this tutorial will go over how to make the actual material and how to actually make the texture itself, the actual flipbook. So if you already have the flipbook texture, you can go ahead and skip to creating the material. If you're interested in learning more about uh, Blackmagic Fusion and how to create animations for free, uh, then keep on watching. Final result will look something like this. So front end, the uh, save icon at the right. To create this flipboat animation, I used a software called DaVinci Resolve, and it's made by Blackmagic, and it's free even for commercial use. There is a paid version that has, I'm guessing, more features, but the free to use version is perfect for our user case. Um, so yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of tutorials about uh, this software itself. I'll just show the, the work I did to uh, have this working. Um, so essentially, I I went inside the Fusion tab. I, I created a Fusion animation. And then it's this save icon is actually a bunch of rectangles. And a lot of them are just masks of the first rectangle with rounded corners. And then I feed that into a transform node. And then that's, that's where the animation happens. Um, so you can see my graph, uh, the size, it, it just goes bigger and then goes back to one, goes back up. And then the angle it, it is just a nice graph and just to make sure that it, it loops nicely. Yeah, so you can see uh, my properties changing in the inspector. Uh, so yeah, that's how I that's how I got this or that's how I made this animation. Um, so now let's go ahead and export it in a square format so we can actually use it uh, inside a sprite sheet or I guess inside a, what we call a flip book. I'll, I'm going to navigate to the launch uh, tab. So DaVinci Resolve is, is quite nice because at first you get your content with this media, then you cut your, your contents. It's also how I do my videos. And then you can edit. And then in the edit is where you create uh, fusion animations or uh, whatever like tags you need to add. Um, and then you can color correct some things. Uh, you can edit music, sound, audio, and then delivering is, is kind of just one click, especially if you want to do it for YouTube. Um, so yeah, so my, my specific settings, I'll just clear my render status for my previous one. So my render settings that I used is custom settings. Uh, I set a, a folder to export to and then I chose the format TIFF. Uh, so this will just output a bunch of images. Uh, and my animation is exactly uh, 30 frames long. So that's it's, it's good that you choose something that is not a uh, prime number. So you can actually have a nice sprite sheet. Uh, yeah, so and, and then make sure to check export alpha and then the rest is pretty much whatever uh, it'll come up to. Yeah, so let's go ahead and add it to render queue if it's not already there. And then render all. All right, it's pretty fast because there's only 30 frames to render. And then let's navigate to our output. All right, so you'll see that your folder has exported all these uh, and they have opacity on them. So. When you go to the right, you'll see it's, it's just a bunch of frames. So next up, we will actually export all these images to a singular sprite sheet. Actually resizing the folder, I can see already that I have one extra uh, image uh, and it will not do such a nice sprite sheet. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to delete the last one because it's it's the same one as the first one and the animation still looks good even without it. So essentially what we'll want is a sprite sheet of six by five. So that's 30. Um, 
So yeah, we're going to go ahead and use a nice tool uh, that's not very visual, but very useful. It's called Magic. I'm finding this tool very useful for, let's say, uh, resizing or making the files of my GIFs smaller or uh, same with generating JPEG or converting any image to any image type. It's I, I do wish there was a, a visual or a, a graphical user interface, uh, but otherwise it's incredibly useful and there's a lot of uh, fun example online. To get this tool or this command line tool, uh, navigate to imagemagic.org and then uh, I'll just paste these, uh, this in my video description. And then uh, to get the Windows binary release, it's right over here and you click it and it's stealth installing. All right, let's uh, run a command from just one folder above our folder with all our images. Um, so for me, it's it's right here. Um, and then you can click in your Explorer's search bar, and then you can actually type in CMD to open up the command prompt. Okay. And then we're gonna run this uh, magic this magic command. So it's a magic montage. And then it's the name of your folder. And then star.tiff just to grab every single image with our, the format we have. And then uh, background none. And then tile times five to say or I guess, uh, I forget if this is horizontal or vertical, let's see. So if we say times five, maybe that's horizontal. And then geometry, uh, 256 by 256. So this will resize every image to 256. And then plus zero, I think it's offset. It's the offset between each image. Uh, so in, in my case, I don't need any, any offset because there's already... Uh, there's already some panning on the images themselves. And then uh, the next parameter is actually the name of the image we want it to be. So I'm actually going to go ahead and make this a PNG. So it'll, it's nice, it'll convert the TIFFs uh, to, it'll put them inside a spreadsheet and it will export to PNG. So I will call this one spreadsheet save icon dot PNG. All right, so you'll see that this actually generated a spreadsheet save a con a PNG and it has a row. Uh, oh, it has six columns. So that means that our times five parameter was actually for the uh, number of rows. So the the best case for a flipbook would be to have uh, like a five by five or six by six. So it actually makes a square. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend having an animation of like either 25 frames or 36 frames. Go ahead and open up your Unreal project. So in my case, it's it's a project based off of Lyra Starter Game 5.1. Uh, so I'm actually going to put all our assets under the icons folder. So under content UI foundation icons, and then I will make a new folder for save. So just in case we actually want to use this uh, this UI or icon for uh, the HUD, not just a loading screen icon. Right, so let's go ahead and create our material. I'll name this one M underscore uh, save icon lipbook. All right. It's not actually a flipbook in the sense of a flipbook, uh, but it uses the same kind of logic, which is nice. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and change this material domain to UI because that's where we are going to use it. And then tr translucent, or I guess we could also try masked, uh, but the translucent does look better. So let's let's go ahead and use our flipbook node and we are actually missing our texture so let's go ahead and import that so here's our png let's just drag it in 
All right. And then let's let's just change its settings to use. Let's actually apply the paper 2D texture settings because uh, this will pretty much get us the settings we need. All right. So this what this actually does is it changes the texture group to 2D pixels uh, and it changes the compression settings to user interface. All right, and then make sure to select your sprite sheet and you can actually rename it to follow the convention. So T underscore sprite sheet and then right click in your material and then start to type texture object. All right, so this will actually use your texture and then let's plug that in into our texture. And then the other value, this is the number of rows. So we actually have uh, let's let's look ahead so we have one two three four five rows so to, again to select a uh, numerical value you can press you can press one on your keyboard and then just click while having one pressed okay so let's say five okay and then uh, our number of columns is going to be six because we do have six columns. Okay. And then let's plug that in. I'll just make this smaller. Let's plug that into our final color and then the alpha right here. Aha. So you see it already looks pretty good. Uh, now, if you actually wanted to have a color on this, uh, like if you want to color it blue or something, what's nice about this is that since it's not a flip book, it's not just using the texture, but it's also a material. So you can actually uh, multiply your result by a color and then you'll get your color. Um, so let's let's go ahead and plug that in and make the color be a parameter. So the color will be a vector 4 or vector 3. Um, so let's um, let's just make a vector parameter. Call it color. And then default value will probably just be white because you don't want to multiply it by zero or else you'll just get black. Um, so then let's I think for multiply shortcut it's M and then you click. Yeah, there you go. And then A by B. And then that will go into our final color. So now if you want to preview what it would look like as a different color, you can set a different color. And now your material instances could have different colors. And so I'll just keep it a white. Let's actually make a material instance so that we don't really have to change any of this, but we always have the option to change the color. So just right click on your material, create material instance. And then let's name this one MI for material instance. Let's just get rid of that underscore. Oh, there's one more. Okay, so now if you open up your material instance, you can see you have your parameter for your color. So if we want to change it slightly, or you, you can just preview what it would look like on any color really. So I'll, I'll just do a little off-white. Like so. Okay. Okay, and then uh, you can use this uh, material UI as an image in any of your UI. So let's uh, let's go ahead and navigate to the loading screen, and then it's the loading screen reason that has the the animated image. So if you don't want the text anymore, you could always just set it to be collapsed. So collapsed is, there you go, in the visibility, collapsed. And then your loading image is this one here, which if you open up, it's quite, quite complex. Uh, so let's just go ahead and set it to our own image. And our image is already using size of 256, so it should fit perfectly. Uh, it's also, it is a square, so we'll have to do a little bit of changes. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and let's backtrack 
to when we had, there you go. Let's drag in our material instance. You can see it's a bit squashed <laughs> at the moment. Um, so let's change this to 256. And it's still squashed because it's inside a size box. So let's go ahead and change the size box to be 512 by 512. Actually, let's change it to be 256 by 256. Okay, now we have our icon. And, oh, another thing I, I changed is in your loading image, uh, set it to fill horizontally and fill ver vertically so it, it looks good. And then let's just compile, save, and let's preview this actually. All right, so let's actually play our game and see our, our nice loading icon. Right, so let's, uh, I'll choose front end. So you'll see our icon is right here. Looks quite nice. And uh, it, it goes with the, the game time. So if, if your screen is loading, it might like jitter a little bit and then it'll go faster, but it's, it's kind of a good look because then you see that things are loading and pretty much every game does this. Um, so yeah, like when you go to play Lyra, let's do quick play. Okay. And then you'll see this loading screen and our icon. And you'll notice that it might look frozen and everything in editor, uh, but in an actual package game, it will look much smoother. So yeah, now you have a material, uh, a flipbook material that with a save icon that you can use on your HUD, or you can just keep as a loading screen icon. Uh, you can create new ones, and it's it's nice because you you get all the uh, you get all the perks of it being a material, uh, and at the same time, uh, you can create your own. Uh, so this is a flipbook. You can create it outside of the engine, um, so it gives you a lot of freedom with what tools you need to use or what tools you prefer. After Effects or uh, Black Magic Fusion, like I just did, which is free. Um, yeah.